I'm Valerie Irvin, Montgomery County Council Member for District 5, inviting you to join me for a conversation with Muriel Bowser, Council Member for Ward 4 in the District of Columbia. That's coming up next right here on County Cable Montgomery. This No Boundaries features a conversation between Valerie Irvin, Montgomery County Council Member, and Muriel Bowser, Council Member for Ward 4 in the District of Columbia. They met at the Society Lounge in downtown Silver Spring, where owner Jason Muskiri greeted the two women. To start things off, Ms. Irvin explained Jason's connection to the county. The owner, Jason Muskiri, actually lived in Montgomery County, went to high school here, went off to become a basketball star, and he has come back home and uh, opened this lounge restaurant in downtown Silver Spring, and it is very popular. Great. Uh, everybody's heard about it. I've been Great. here a few times, the line out the door. Great. So for those of you who haven't had the opportunity, come on by, it's on Georgia Avenue, downtown Silver Spring. Well, we love it, and thank you for inviting me. I'm always happy to be in downtown Silver <laughs> Spring. You know, downtown Silver Spring and Montgomery County have been good to me. Yes. And of course, we, we wanna support everything that you're doing. Oh, you're so kind. Well, we've been trying to get you for a while because yes. you're, a, you're a, a very popular person. But Thank I want to just start uh, the show by talking a little bit about you and your background because sure. people really are curious and want to get to know uh, Muriel Bowser a little bit better. But uh, I know you used to work here. I did. I Tell did. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, one of my uh, first jobs after college and while I was in graduate school was in Montgomery County. I worked for um, the Department of Transit Services okay. um, right here in downtown Silver Spring. So my job uh, early on was to support the Silver Spring Transportation Management District. Um, and then I became the assistant director of the Silver Spring Regional Services Center. Yes. Um, so over the course of many years, I've been been all over the county, worked with many departments, small businesses. Just before I came here, I stopped by the Kefa Cafe um, to check in on them. I was delighted to see that they're celebrating their 16th anniversary. Wow. Um, and I was scratching my head. I think I was around for the first couple of anniversaries. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, and so I'm just delighted to see small businesses thriving alongside a major redevelopment project that so many people work so long and hard for. Yeah, well, you know all about it. You were here then yes. uh, during all the planning yes. and the blood, sweat, and tears that had to happen before we could birth uh, the Silver Spring that we see right now. Absolutely. But uh, I want people watching to know how closely we work on a lot of issues. Yes. First of all, when it comes to transportation, there is nobody that has more information that's more attuned to the needs of transportation in the region than you are well, because you. you serve on the WMATA board. Yes. Um, tell us a little bit about that. Well, I, I'm happy to. I've been representing um, DC on the board since last August. Um, and before that, I chaired the Transportation Planning Board, another regional body affecting transportation. And it's interesting that you call your show No Boundaries because there are a lot of issues that you know they pay no attention to political boundaries right. and traffic is one of the biggest ones right. um, and so there's no bigger player in that game than WMATA. Um, Metro drives the economy across this region um, so, uh, you know our region will go as Metro goes Absolutely. Um, and so uh, it's important now that we are investing in Metro in Maryland in Montgomery County and the district have certainly stepped up to the plate the whole region has to step up to the plate uh, and we can just see what the Silver Spring Metro has meant to this area. Absolutely. Um, and there are other places across uh, Prince George's County and um, more underserved parts of the District of Columbia that we want to see that type of development um, as well. Well, I like the name of the show, No Boundaries, for another reason, and that is because what we are demonstrating is that there are these great relationships across these boundaries. Absolutely. You and I have a relationship. Absolutely. We need to have that relationship. Absolutely. Um, and so I want to talk a little bit about how you even started. Okay. But I've read a little bit about you. Okay. And I know that your father sure. uh, has been an amazing community activist. So I want you to just tell folks a little bit about sure. how you came from that family to become 
uh, this uh, political dynamo in, well, uh, in the District absolutely. of Absolutely. Well, people ask me this question all the time, um, and they say, did you always know you were going to run for office? And um, I don't know that I ever knew that I was going to run for office, but I knew that I would be in public service. Mm -hmm. And I tried the private sector, and, you know, I, I, I just knew that that didn't match my, my skills or my passion. So um, I came home, and I went to graduate school at American University. I got a job in local government with Montgomery County, and that's when I just really fell in love with local government. Um, I come from a family of activists. In the district, we have a position called Advisory Neighborhood Commissioner. So it is a, you're an elected leader of 2,000 voters. You don't get paid, um, and your job is to hold the government accountable. And the first class of ANC commissioners was in 1976, I believe, um, and my father was in that class. Wow. And he served for 30, 30 plus years. Um, as an ANC commissioner. So for us, you know, family time was passing out flyers <laughs> or going to civic associations or manning a poll. Right, um, so right. that's how I, I became involved and, and stayed involved. And when I was able to buy my home in the district in Ward 4, I knew that I had to, had to keep that up. I love that story because I think there is a thread among all of us that end up in this kind of service that it came from someplace. Absolutely. You know, this is not accidental. Even though it might not have been planned, it's not right. accidental. Not ac so I, yeah, I love hearing to, that. You know, we're all politicians at some level. Yeah. Um, for you, it may be getting involved in your PTA, your civic association, or your business association in your group, but we all have, uh, have to be called to some level of public service to get the, the communities that we want. And the other thing I wanted to talk to you about is you are a very young politician. And uh, I don't like to give, to. well, I don't like to give my age away, but <laughs> <laughs> I, I noticed um, that you're very unique in that in that perspective as a woman especially Thank you. in the district and I know mm -hmm. that that's not easy. It's not easy um, and you know I've often been the youngest person in a lot of the endeavors that I've gone into or the the only woman or the only African-American woman or person um, at the table and so it just calls you to be on your toes all the time um, to expect people to question you yes. um, and to, to over deliver um, yeah. every time so it uh, can be a challenge Challenge, but I think that you know I've, I've dealt with it head on, yeah. and um, I've earned people's respect along along the have. way. So now I used to be the youngest member of the city council. We just got a new council member who's younger than than I, um, and I'm proud to say I'm going to be having a milestone birthday uh, this summer. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Thirty? Yeah, uh, yeah. We love you. No, I'll be the, the other one. Okay, the, the other one. one. Okay. Uh, but uh, we're, we're looking. I'm looking forward to it. That's wonderful. Well, I like what you say about over delivering yes um, because when you're the only one the youngest one there's there's something about you having to prove yourself far and away above everyone else and yes. I have seen you in community meetings that we've shared yeah. and I have always been so impressed you. by your grasp of the issues and your sort of no uh, take no prisoner <laughs> sometimes approach to to the topic at hand and I think sure. that when people see you and hear you they walk away saying wow she's really really something else. Well, I love it. And I think, yeah. you, like you, uh -huh. I mean, I love um, the opportunity to serve. People have put a, a great deal of trust in, in us, and it's a huge responsibility. Yeah. I represent 75,000 people. Um, and so when I stand there, it's just not Muriel Bowser. I'm right. standing there for some very active, engaged um, constituents who expect um, me to speak for them. And you do, and I know we share a boundary very near here yes, on we Eastern do. Avenue. We do. And there's been a lot of very um, interesting issues coming up around crime, but now uh, on my side of Eastern Avenue, sure. the issue has been parking. On and, my, on and mine too. too. <laughs> <laughs> so it's good that we are able to pick up the phone. Uh, our staffs can All talk right. to each other, we can talk to each other, because people really like to see the two sides of that border but uh, it makes in a dialogue. Difference. Yes, yeah. when we had we had a spree of crime in, in one of my neighborhoods in Shepherd Park um, that people were really terrified mm -hmm. um, and I was able to call your office yes. and because I was able to pick up the phone and get your office the 
people who needed to be at the meeting were at the meeting. Yes. Um, and I had a similar situation with Councilmember Campos from Prince George's County. I called Councilmember Campos and I said, I think it's really important that we have this whole border represented at this meeting. Yes. Um, and that, that makes a difference and it is reassuring um, to our residents. And lo and behold, you know, the police, I have to say, have been extremely responsive yes. to what we need and presence on both sides of the line. Um, and that's making a difference. I think someone at my friend's school has this thing called autism. My friend's brother's son has autism. My neighbor's son has autism. My son has autism. Autism is getting closer to home. Today, one in 110 children is diagnosed with autism. That's a 600% increase in the last 20 years. Learn the signs at autismspeaks.org. Sixty minutes of physical activity a day and eating well can help get your child healthy. So keep them active and eating well every day. Get ideas, get involved, get going at letsmove.gov. That's letsmove.gov. From the Society Lounge in downtown Silver Spring, the conversation between Montgomery County Council Member Valerie Irvin and DC Council Member Muriel Bowser continues. This segment begins with a request from Ms. Bowser on behalf of her constituents who live along Eastern Avenue. On our side of that particular boundary is a low density residential development. And on your side is high, high density. density residential yeah. development. And so Montgomery County has been at the forefront of shared parking. Yes. Um, and we have some lessons to learn from you in that. And so you have encouraged developers not to build their own parking, but the, to, to invest in the parking lot district. Um, and so that has uh, led to some interesting things I'm so glad you're working on in terms of how to encourage people to you actually use the shared parking but in conversations with my constituents um, about parking um, they said you know the other thing that we can work with the county on is on a dog park yes um, because people will cross boundaries to do any number of things and we want our residents to support your businesses Absolutely. and we want your residents to support our businesses your residents will use our parks uh, our residents will use your parks but we've seen like the real need for a, a dog park um, in the, the upper part of our ward certainly but we think it would be ideal um, in South Silver Spring. Well I'm really glad you brought that to my attention because I want to invite you to come okay. uh, to a council session to talk a little bit about this. I think the more we do this show the more okay. it is clear that the relationships that we have with each other mm -hmm. are extraordinarily important uh, as it relates to getting things done on behalf of our residents. Absolutely. So this is a, clearly a huge issue. Um, this development is just really getting ramped up on our side of, right. of that boundary. Absolutely. So, um, and I think there, there are things that we can share. We just built a beautiful playground and ball field at, in Shepherd Park. Okay. Um, and we we love the Jesse, is it the Jesse Blair Park? Jessup. Uh, Jessup Park. Yeah. Um, and we know a lot of our residents use um, use that park, uh, but we really need, we need a dog park. This is so interesting because our residents don't know any boundaries. Yes. I mean, DC residents use our hospitals, yes. our residents use your hospitals. Absolutely. They come back and forth for all kinds of goods and services. Absolutely. And so we need to get really smart about this. Absolutely. And especially those of us that represent areas right on the border. Mm -hmm. And we're just now starting to have these conversations mm -hmm. about how everything affects everything. Well, I want to talk about grassroots activism sure. for a minute because I think that's what you're known for. Thank you. Um, here in Montgomery County, but especially in your ward. So, and I know how incredibly important it is, especially as elected leaders, that we really have to sort of walk the talk. Absolutely. So I want you to talk a little bit about well, that. Well, I, what I tell people all the time is, we know that we can change our city one block at a time. And that's just, it sounds cliche in mm -hmm. some ways, but it's, it's really so true. Um, and I, I don't approach my job as a council member 
from the top down um, because you have to bring people along um, with you and it's my job to be the leader to kind of set the stage for conversation and uh, make sure people have all the information that they need um, but it's also my job to listen um, and to, to really encourage other people to lead as well. I think sometimes uh, officials in our position we drop the ball when we don't build capacity mm. or train future leaders because we're not going to be in these seats forever. Um, and so I, I use the opportunity for all of our associations and ANC groups um, to try to, to build that leadership. Yeah, I really love hearing about the ANC because mm -hmm. Montgomery County is a changing community. Yep. Um, so we are now, for the first time, a majority minority community, but it's not reflected in the civic organizations, it's not reflected in who's elected mm -hmm. to office. Mm -hmm. We have a really, really long way to go. And so my interest in hearing about your activism is in maybe trying to copy some of what you're doing in, in the district because the ANC to me is a really, really good way to encourage participation across the board. Sure. And I get really discouraged sometimes when you, you talked about this earlier, being the only one in the room. Right. <clears throat> I don't want to be the only African American person in a in my district attending a meeting right. that affects a whole lot of people. Right. And so we need to do more. I sort of came into office in a very similar way. I, I was a union organizer, so my background really is in organizing. And so I have a propensity to always be on the ground, right. you know, where people are. And that takes a lot of time. I know your staff must be exhausted they following are very tired. Around. And same as my staff, they kind of like roll their eyes sometimes at me. But it's all good because I think um, we have to be the people who model the behavior that I think that we want to see in politics. Absolutely. So. And I think one of the, um, I was, just coming off of a primary and I was so pleased that one of the endorsements that we got from a local newspaper um, was that the the writer said he sees me at the ANC meetings on a regular basis more than my colleagues mm -hmm. and I said yes <laughs> that's that's uh, not that I want people to talk about it but yeah. I'm glad that uh, people notice it because it's important for me to hear what people are saying directly um, not before an issue doubles up um, and you might know I had the response Responsibility when I was in Montgomery County to staff the Silver Spring CAB. Citizens Advisory C Board. Citizens Advisory yeah. Board. And I also staffed the Silver Spring Transportation Management District. Oh my goodness. Um, so I know that the county is, is committed to having very active boards and commissions and um, and I know you'll you'll make sure that everybody has a seat at the table. We're trying. Yeah. And there is a there is an, uh, a big sweeping change happening in the CACs across the county. Okay. And it's just been very hard to energize a group of people right. who have not been participating historically. And so now that, that brings me to um, recognition uh, that you have been receiving for your amazing work. And I know in 2011 you got recognized um, and I want you to talk about what that recognition was and how, how, how that happened. Sure. Well, City Year, and I think they're active in the county as well. Um, I'm not they, sure if I know them. They are a volunteer-based um, group, and a, they are affiliated with AmeriCorps. Okay. Um, and it's how we get a volunteer corps through to youth programs throughout the District of Columbia. And they have a lot of energy, dynamic leadership. Kids from all over the country um, come to get that, that first, uh, you know, volunteer training activity. Um, and they, they called me the idealist of the year, and uh, that, that was a, a nice recognition. I just think it, it shows that we're committed to government um, and the government that we all aspire to. Well, that gives me goosebumps when you get a, an award for being an idealist because, you know, after a while, sometimes you, you know, you get a little, you know, um, sort of down yeah. because the work is so hard and um, people don't recognize what goes on, on behind the scenes right. and the impact it has on your personal life, Sure. Uh, the impact it has on you thinking about your life moving forward because once you've invested this much time and people want to keep you around, mm -hmm. um, you really do belong then to the district they, right. that you are theirs right. in some way. Right. So I, I just think that is a, a terrific way to be recognized as, as an idealist. Well, thank you. Yeah. So thank you. And I, I have uh, people ask me all the time, are, are you maintaining a balance? So I'll ask you, are you maintaining a balance? 
I'm learning how okay. to maintain a balance. <laughs> if, uh, if there's anything that I can impart to uh, younger women, especially coming mm -hmm. behind me, mm -hmm. is that it's all a balance. Right. Because you're no good if you're burnt out. Right. And um, you have to figure out how to do that. Right. It's hard. Yes. Hi, my name's CJ. A few years ago, my father became seriously ill. I did what I could do before he passed, but it took its toll. I lost my job, my house. I'm getting back on my feet, but I don't know when there'll be food on the table. How'd I do, CJ? We could be twins. Well, cousins, maybe. <laughs> Play a role in ending hunger. Visit feedingamerica.org slash hunger and find your local food bank. Up, college is hard, down, those books are heavy. My sport is football, but my passion is education. Right up here. So every year I take promising high schoolers on a college tour there, dark to show them that higher education means a brighter future. <laughs> my name is Namdi Asamoah. I don't just wear the shirt, I live it. You can be a reader, tutor, or mentor too. Take the pledge at liveunited.org slash volunteer. Do you wear this? As this No Boundaries continues, Montgomery County Councilmember Valerie Irvin reveals that she envies something about D.C. Councilmember Muriel Bowser's background. I grew up in a family of five children, awesome. and I see that you did as well. I did. And the thing I'm most jealous about is that you're a fifth generation Washingtonian, very rare around here. I, I, I was uh, fortunate that I was able to travel throughout my childhood and okay. my life as my father was in the military, but I always wanted to grow up in a neighborhood where I knew everybody right. and I went to school with them. So right. talk a little bit about what well, that was like. Well, that's how I grew up, in yeah. a neighborhood where everybody knew us. Um, and wherever I go, there's somebody who knows my mother, my father, or one of my siblings. <laughs> uh, and it's it's a pleasure, really. So we, we all grew up here. It's four of out, out of the five of us are still in D.C. I live in Ward 4. My parents live in Ward 5. I have a brother in Ward 6, a brother in Ward seven and my sisters in Ward 8. Oh my goodness. Um, so we're all over uh, the, the city and uh, we were just raised to to stay committed to Washington. We believe really strongly in this city um, and we believe that people who care about it have to stay here and work for it. Well that's such a great story. Now, are I you, love that. Are you local also? Were you I, born here? I was not born here. Okay. I was born overseas okay. and I moved here though in 1987. Okay. So I've actually lived here longer than I've lived anywhere my okay. entire life. Yeah. So okay. I consider it home. What's well, the best region in it, the in, no anywhere? Doubt. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> so I want to kind of segue into uh, what's happening in your life currently. Sure. And I know it's been a very stressful several months yep. uh, in, in the district. But I think even though it's been stressful, you have risen, I believe, in a lot of people's minds as a future leader beyond uh, even the city council. And sure. why I say that is because um, it is not easy to be in a situation where um, very hard things are happening right now. Sure. And I want to talk to you about that on a professional level, but more about it on a personal level, like in terms of how it's impacted you, how you see your way forward. Sure. If you can well, it, it has uh, focused me certainly on my job um, and my job representing the residents of Ward 4, but also the opportunities that I've had to really uh, change the systems in the district to uh, to make our, our, our regime and rules and organization more robust um, because I firmly believe that that will help um, the government steady itself. Um, you know, I have the opportunity to create a new ethics commission like Montgomery County has had yes. for, for years and years. Uh, we've had a, a board that focused on ethics and elections at the same time. Um, and we believe that you have to focus on ethics and ethics alone. So um, it's been my pleasure to, to forge that through the council. And you'll, you know, um, it's hard to make people think about doing uh, business differently when they've been doing it one way for the uh -huh, same time. Uh -huh. It's hard to convince a legislative body that your idea is the right idea. Um, but we were able to get a unanimous um, vote of approval um, from, from our council, um, and we're going to move uh, forward 
forward with that. Uh, and it's also important that everybody knows that we're still focused at the business at hand. Our city is growing. Uh, we have 40 cranes up. We have a billion dollars in, in the bank. We're envy of a lot of jurisdictions. So there are a lot of things going right. Um, and the residents have to know that we have our head down and we're getting work done. I love hearing that. And in light of the fact that things are a little tough right now, yeah. the ethics piece is really important. Sure. I have come to understand and value um, Montgomery County's Ethics Commission and Absolutely. have become a stalwart champion for them. Um, and to make sure that they're, they have funding for their staff, to make sure that they're independent, uh, which is the only way that they can work. Yeah. So I've been reading in the paper um, about your initiative and I, I, you know, back over here in the in the uh, privacy of my own office, right. really cheering, cheering you on. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. And, and you know how hard it is, as scarce as resources are. Um, and the funding piece that you mentioned is so important. I learned that um, our Office of Campaign Finance over the years, they've virtually been gutted. Um, and so they can't do the work that we charge them to do if we don't um, give them the resources to do it. So I uh, led the council and we gave them almost an additional million dollars wow. this year, nine positions, legal, audit, um, staff, and, and, and that's all I very didn't realize important. that, wow. Yeah, it's a big thing. Yeah. And I know that we're all struggling to make sure we're delivering the services without having to go back to the people um, and ask them for more money. And, and that's, that's a struggle. Well, congratulations thank you, on that. Thank you. I, I do want to sort of move toward uh, closing by sure. just talking about campaign finance reform, sure. just in, in its sort of, you know, large scope across the country in yes. terms of what's happening yes. in politics right now. And um, I know that I've talked to people locally about what it would look like if we were to, to change the rules of how we engage uh, ourselves in political campaigns. And it really does make a difference. Money really does play a significant role in who ends up representing people. Yeah. I mean, what, what are your thoughts on that? Well, you know, I, I, I read with interest every day what's mm -hmm. going on at the national level, and I don't think we know the full ramifications of Citizens United and that Supreme Court decision. Uh, we have some initiatives in the District of Columbia that p of people who are moving towards an initiative. Um, the council has some ideas on the table to, to change the way we do business. I think the bottom line is, though, Valerie, that people want to know who's involved. Yes. Um, disclosure are so important. They want to know that their representatives represent them yes. um, and that we are, are moving in a transparent way. I think over the even the last several months, my, my thinking is even in evolving uh, around mm -hmm. these issues and I'm challenging myself and I'll challenge my colleagues to think differently about how how we do business. The bottom line though is that everybody has to know the rules. They have to be transparent so people can make their own choices. Mm -hmm. I think the bottom line of our system of government is that people will choose if they have enough information. Yes. Um, and so all of the rules and regulations have to have to err on the side of transparency. Right, and also leveling the playing field. Sure. And it would be a really good thing to have the district, Montgomery County, and Prince George's County's um, uh, elected officials come up with some sort of a pact in terms of our engagement and how we move forward in, in this, in this um, very difficult time around that Supreme Court decision. Sure. Because it's got to change. Okay. Um, because there's too much money, I believe, in politics that uh, takes the fairness out of it. Okay. So I would love to talk it, to you a little bit more because be our nice. rules are all very different. They're very different. Well, you all are sort of a, a state. Yes. And we are not. Um, so there are a lot of things that would be different, but it would be nice for us all to talk about it. Okay. Uh, get together as, uh, you know, three three different bodies. I don't know if these three bodies have ever had the the ability to sit down. You mm -hmm. know, we have open meetings, so we would have to have, you know. Sure press would be in the room, but I think it would be fascinating sure. to have the, the uh, city council with the Montgomery County Council and the Prince George's County Council, and maybe even some folks from Virginia, from Fairfax, all in a room together uh, talking about some of these major, major issues that impact all of our jurisdictions across the D.C. Area. Right, and there, there are a lot of women leaders in those uh, jurisdictions <laughs> now, so maybe the women should start. How about that? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, we're going to come to a close Thank now, you. and I, I just have to tell you how much fun I've had it's been um, awesome. talking with you. Uh, you are an amazing leader, and uh, I have been following your ascent 
uh, in politics for a while, and I think you're going to go a long way. Well, so. thank you, Valerie, yeah. and um, would you, I just want to congratulate you on all the good things happening in the county, um, certainly um, in our, our beloved Silver Spring. All right, thanks. Thank you.